Morning all, and uh, welcome to another news of the day. Now, there was some news that happened yesterday, and I put the board together, kind of, sort of, and I thought, well, we'll see what else happens on Tuesday. Fill it up a little bit more, throw a video together, put it on the internet for you fine people. Eh, it's the least I can do. So, uh, the first thing that happened yesterday was Mikhail Gregorenko signs contract for next season with Columbus. And it was announced on NHL.com, and then embarrassingly, the NHL itself said, uh, no, you can't sign a contract for next year without a component for this year until we've started next year. So they can refile it potentially July 1st. What's well, being announced is July 1st, but if we're going to play hockey potentially later than July 1st, they'll have to wait until we're officially starting the following season, because that's the thing. The new season starts July 1st. If they're going to play hockey in July or August, the new season doesn't start until potentially September. So, Gregorenko will sign, officially, a one-year, $1.2 million deal with Columbus as soon as possible. So, it's interesting in that Gregorenko, uh, at the time he left the NHL, it, it just didn't look like it was there. It didn't look like he had that NHL upside. But since it's Yarmo doing doing the signing, I'm thinking, you know what? Maybe Yarmo knows something the rest of us don't. Maybe Yarmo's got something figured out here. So uh, we'll see whether or not that works out for him. And then uh, Kekalainen as well uh, has talked about Dubinsky's wrist, wrist recently and says it's not improving, that he, he believes it could be a, a, a chronic injury for him. And uh, there's one year left on Dubinsky's contract before he's UFA. So he'll probably stay on the LTIR, which is not really... Hugely surprising, but it, it is too bad. Uh, Dubinsky, one of those players that ends up on LTIR and, and just stays there. Um, so yeah, Columbus adding Grigorenko. We'll see how that works out for them. Uh, again, you better be ready to work because Tortorella is going to be behind the bench and he doesn't accept um, half-hearted effort. So uh, yesterday also the Ottawa Senators, and I, I actually I got a kick out of this. I thought, man, Twitter's going to do great, and then they did. Thank you, Twitter. Uh, Anthony LeBlanc has been hired as president of business operations, and the top response on Twitter underneath it is the South Park um, image that says, and he's fired underneath. So thank you, Twitter. Uh, and then there was over under on four months, five months. The organization's got some work to do when it comes to their public perception. Uh, they're, they've got some, some real work to do with this, and uh, well, we'll, see, we'll see how this goes. Uh, again, with Ottawa, it feels like the team is in the process of, of maybe getting things turned around as soon as next year. But just business-wise, and, and the, the perception of the organization needs a lot of work. And they keep, keep hiring and firing people. Uh, and, and that's that's not going to help. So we'll see how this works. My fingers crossed for Anthony LeBlanc that it'll work out just fine for him. I don't wish for people to get fired. Uh, Chris Kreider says he feels better. So Kreider, he's good to go. A lot of players, good to go. Uh, and again, we'll see whether or not there's a season for them to get to. Uh, Oshi, TJ Oshi, uh, he... He wants to play. So they've, they've been talking to players, and from what I've seen, even Doughty, Doughty who said, I can't see it. When he was asked, well, do you have that opinion because LA's not in the playoffs, he answered with, yeah, kind of, maybe. So one one question that's come up is, so if you're Tampa, you're Boston, you're, you're uh, Flyers, you're the, you're the Penguins, you're the Capitals, you may very well, like TJ Oshie, you're Capitals, right? You may very well be like, yeah. Yeah, we, we want to see how this turns out. We want to play the playoffs. And if you're on a team that isn't in, in the playoff spot and you wouldn't really have anything to play for, it might be like, oh, why are we going to bother? So that's an interesting uh, 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 feeling. And I don't know how many people that play for the non-playoff teams would have that opinion. I mean, for Doughty, it's kind of easy too, right? Because he's got job certainty up the yin-yang for the next seven, seven years. So... He's, he's good. He doesn't really need to come back and play hockey. There's a lot of players, I would think, even on teams that don't have a shot at a playoff spot, that would be like, you know, I could make an impression over 
a few regular season games there, maybe during a two-week span before we get to the playoffs. Maybe I can impress management into giving me another contract. Maybe, you know, it's my UFA year. Maybe I want to get a few extra goals and points. Maybe I want to get a few extra hits, maybe a fight or two. So we'll see how prevalent that feeling is. Um, but it, it is an interesting factor. And again, you know, the NHL trying to figure all this out. And then to counterbalance a lot of the, the negativity that's out there as well, uh, Gretzky thinks hockey's going to get played this summer. So Gretzky figures sometime later this summer we'll see hockey in some form. And there's been, there's definitely been frustration. I, I feel like it's more south of the border than north of the border. Um, I, I know there was some protest in Vancouver, but it was nowhere near as big as they seem to make it look on TV. But, uh, you know, it's, I, I think we're going to see some things reopen as time goes on, as long as we do this right. And I, I definitely think sporting venues will be open, though not to fans. So to the players, and then again, and then we get into all the logistics, and we argue about all the logistics, even though nobody's decided anything yet, which to me is kind of weird. I, it feels like when you're opening up a board game and people are already fighting over how you're going to play it. It's basically Monopoly. Right now, the whole world has turned into Monopoly. Where you're you're getting ready to set up the board and you're already having arguments. Like, alright, if somebody's got one of the orange properties, then they're allowed to buy all three. Well, if I land on an orange property, you're not allowed to have one? No, you're not allowed to have one because if I have one, you can't have it. But, okay, well, what about building hotels? Well, yeah, we can have multiple hotels. I don't think you're allowed to have multiple hotels. Look, I don't want this game to go on forever. So, yeah, you can have like four hotels. We're going to have four hotels on a property. Sure. So if I'm on Boardwalk, I'm going to owe you basically $80,000. Yeah, yeah, you could owe me $80,000. I don't really care. There isn't $80,000 in the game, is there? I don't know. You want to count it? I don't feel like counting it. Whatever. Game's not even out of the box. And it kind of feels like right now the whole world is a giant game of Monopoly that we, we haven't even got it out of the box yet. We don't even know how the rules are going to go. And everybody's already arguing about it. So weird. Uh, I, I mean, I understand the frustration, but you know, it's been six weeks for me at home. And we'll, we'll just see how things, how things go. Uh, all right, Tyler Sagan. Tyler Sagan's the reason I'm wearing Dallas today. This is kind of a nice thing. So they're having an all-in challenge, which is... You know, um, donating and, and doing nice things and, and raising money uh, for charity. And it's kind of nice to see uh, Michael Delzato threw Tyler Sagan's name out there. And Sagan went, fine, I can do that. Uh, so he's auctioning off items for charity and, and basically a day for charity. So this isn't just like you're you're going on the multiple items. You're, the whole package is what you're you're negotiating for and, and bidding on. Uh, he's auctioning uh, a practice... So you go to the Stars practice uh, on a game day, and you have dinner with Tyler Sagan. Uh, flights and hotel are not included, so I looked through it. I looked through the listing. It's currently at $3,600 US at the time I'm recording this, is what it is for this. Uh, you get an auction stick as well. There's other memorabilia that he's throwing in. And it's honestly, it's pretty sweet deal. Uh, now, at $3,600, it's a pricey one, but uh, that money goes to Feeding America, Meals on Wheels, World Central Kitchen, and No Kid Hungry. So those are the charities that the money will be split between. And uh, it, it, it's, it's a nice thing that they're doing. Uh, there's, there's other sports um, celebrities doing this. Tom Brady has a package himself that he's, he's auctioning off that's up to like three quarters of a million. Something ridiculous. Like it's a lot. So this is raising a lot of money. And good on him. Good on him. Uh, now, uh, the other thing, too, with Sagan is that when interviewed, yeah, he wants playoffs. He wants to get back out there and play. Because, again, and, and the, the other interesting thing is with, with Oshi as well, he doesn't care how, he doesn't care where. Uh, so when I see people going, well, I don't think players are going to like this whole isolation thing. I don't think they're going to go for it. Well, ask the players. So we can all speculate. But, again, it, it is arguing over a monopoly before you get it out of the box. Ask the players. Sit down and we'll figure something out. And I, I think that's what's going to happen. I really do. I think there's going to be some really good negotiations between the NHL and the NHLPA because they have to. So the July 1st deadline for everything, they're going to negotiate that. Uh, this, is, this, is, this is the chance that we can finally have peace between the union and the NHL. 
So, is it worth all of this to get peace between the NHLPA and the NHL? Eh, who knows. But if that's the end result of this, that we see a lasting peace and we don't see a lockout again, that'd be fantastic. That would be fantastic. Uh, now, uh, Montreal Canadiens this morning made news. Uh, Vasily Demchenko, uh, 26 years of age, signs a one-year contract with the Montreal Canadiens. We'll see whether or not the NHL steps in and goes, okay, we already did this to Columbus. You guys can't do this. Now, it's a two-way contract. And uh, makes seven hundred grand at the NHL level, seventy grand at the AHL level, and he gets a signing bonus of eighty-two or ninety-two thousand dollars, I believe, ninety-two thousand five hundred, something like that. And uh, not bad numbers. Now, last this past season, uh, nine seventeen and three with a nine oh seven save percentage. But for his career in the KHL, eighty-one sixty-six and twenty-five with a nine twenty-five save percentage. So, if he can come over and be their backup, that's kind of a steal. So. Maybe Mark Bergevin has, has one up his sleeve right now, and we'll see how that turns out. But for Montreal, good job. Uh, goaltending depth has been an issue, and looks like they're ready to address that. So there you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below, as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. And remember, uh, stay home as you, as you can, as you're able to. Uh, stay safe out there, and uh, remember to wash your hands. Uh, like I've been saying, the numbers here in BC, they fluctuated a bit, but they've been really pretty darn good. So um, to people in British Columbia, thank you for doing your part and everything. And again, uh, I know there's all the negative Nellies out there, but there's been some positives lately as well. You just have to get through all the negative stuff to get there. And I want to throw in here as well, uh, for those who watch this channel in Nova Scotia, and I know there's a lot. Uh, my heart goes out to the people in Nova Scotia right now. The um, worst event um, of its kind in Canadian history. Just, yeah, I, I have to throw that in because uh, I have I have family and friends and stuff in, in, in there. And, uh, yeah, you know, we're, we're in this, this bizarre time and then you throw that kind of stuff in there. And, uh, yeah, so my thoughts are with you. Hopefully, you know, everybody's as okay as you can be with that kind of stupidity going on but and and I, I there may be people who don't know what happened in Nova Scotia but I would imagine most people do 2020 really kind of sucks doesn't it it really kind of sort of does it really is it really is the tire fire of years it it is it is the dumpster fire of years and I'll be very very glad to put it in my rearview mirror and never speak of it again except of course in history videos so, all right, thank you guys so much for all your support throughout all this. And hey, I will talk to you again soon.